What's up YouTube? Welcome back to Lotted Tech. Today we have an exciting piece of tech. This will actually be my first 3D printer and it's the Ender 3 V2. Now the Ender 3 V2 is the newest printer in the Ender 3 line and it's popular among both beginners and professionals for its ease of use and easy customization. And this comes in at around 250 US dollars. And there's also a very large community of support around this printer. So you can always learn new things and get new information when you have this. So without further ado, let's see what's inside the box. First of all, I can say that this is very well packaged, a lot of foam with cutouts. But first we see the instruction manual, which will tell you how to assemble the printer. And then here you have your top frame and X axis extrusions. Then you have your spool, bracket and holder. And here you have your screen assembly, which includes the screen and the screen bracket. And here you can see the screen bracket attaches to the base by three T-nuts. And here you have your extruder assembly. And this is the part of the printer that's going to actually feed your filament through to your nozzle for printing. Next up, you have your printer base and it already has the hot end assembly attached to it. And the hot end is where your filament actually comes from while you're printing. And right here, you can see the nozzle. And here are your Z-axis extrusions and the Z-axis lead screw. And this is what's gonna help your printer move up and down as it's printing. And here is that Z access motor, which is gonna drive that Z access screw. And in this bag, you have some sample filament. It's actually a nice amount of filament. And you also have your screws and other things you need to assemble. And here's your Z access tensioner. You also get a scraper for removing your prints if needed. And in this bag, you have all your tools that you need for assembling your printer. Included with that is a pair of flush cutters, which is gonna be very useful in your printing. And here's your Z roller. And last, you have your power cable. And here's a look at everything that's inside the box. So you get a lot of pieces, a lot of parts, but it's very easy to assemble. So that's what we'll be doing next. And here, just looking at the micro SD card and card reader, which is eight gigabytes. So before we actually get started assembling, I wanted to do an immediate upgrade and I'm gonna be upgrading the springs on the base of the printer. I watched a lot of videos before I bought this printer and this was highly recommended. So I wanted to go ahead and get it done to go ahead and get it out of the way and prevent any issues. And I'm gonna be using these yellow spring replacements. They're a bit longer than the original springs and they are a lot stronger and they're gonna overall help to just prevent you from having to continuously level your platform. First, we're gonna connect the Z-axis limit switch and attach the Z-axis extrusions to the base. And as I said, these Z-axis extrusions are gonna be your side frames. And there is the extrusion with the Z-axis limit switch attached. Now 
Next, attach the Z-axis motor and lead screw to the left extrusion. So now we're putting that lead screw and motor together and attaching it to that left extrusion. Next, attach the extruder assembly to the X-axis extrusion. Next, attach the tension belt hiding assembly, Z-roller and X-axis belt tensioner to the X-axis extrusion. So this is where we're putting together all of the parts and adding on the hot end to the X axis. So next we're gonna be sliding the X axis onto the Z axis and attaching the top frame. And now that we have the frame all together, we're gonna attach the screen to the base. Next, attach the spool bracket and holder to the top of your printer. Next up, attach your PTFE tube to the extruder using the coupler and also attach all of your wiring. Flip the voltage switch on the back to the correct voltage. That's gonna be 115 for the US and 230 for Europe. Then after tightening down the bed and adjusting your Z-axis limit switch, power on your printer and auto home. So you're gonna select auto home on the screen and if everything is wired correctly, your printer should move to the bottom left corner of the printing base. Next step is to preheat the bed and then level the bed. So using the screen, preheat the bed to 60 degrees. And then I'm gonna load a bed leveling G code on my micro SD card, and I'm gonna use that to level the bed. I'll have this G code linked in the description. So with this G code, it's gonna move your print nozzle around to each corner of your printing base. And you can use a piece of paper to adjust your bed so that you feel a slight friction when moving the paper around between the nozzle and the printing bed. And it's gonna be important to do this a couple of times, so just take your time with this and it's definitely gonna pay off to make sure you get some good prints. And what's cool about the adjustment knobs is they actually have arrows on them that tell you which way to turn the knob to move the bed up or down. Next, you wanna heat up your nozzle to 200 degrees and load your filament.
So here's the sample filament that came with the printer. And before you actually load the filament, you wanna use your flush cutters to cut the end of the filament at an angle to make it easier to insert it into your PTFE tube and feed it through to your nozzle. And now you're ready to print. So choose a G-code file and get it started. And my first print was a calibration cube that I got off of Thingiverse. Here's a look at the finished product. Overall, it printed well. I can see that it curved up at the bottom a little. So that's a bed adhesion issue that I will fix later. And here are a couple of prints I did. As you can see, I had some good prints, but I also had a couple of fills. Actually, a lot of fills. And this was all due to the bed adhesion issue. To fix the bed adhesion issue, I had to use glue sticks, raise my nozzle temperature to 210 when printing PLA, and I also used brims in my slicing software, especially for smaller pieces. That's the end of 3v2. I've already been doing a lot of printing and plan to do a lot more, a few more upgrades. So there would definitely be more 3D printing content. So please make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss any of this upcoming content. Also, if you have any suggestions or anything in relation to 3D printing, let me know in the comments what you think I should do as far as upgrades. But other than that, thank you guys for watching and as always, stay loaded.